Howdy folks. Let's go over some waiting commands that WebDriver IO provides. Sometimes when testing a page, you need to wait for something to happen on the page before you proceed to do something. So maybe an element needs to appear or an element needs to go away before you do something. One common example is to wait for, like say a single page app, you change a route and you have a loading bar that comes up. Well, you wanna wait for that loading bar to go away before you proceed to do anything else on the page. So let's do an example here. So I'm back on this page here. Uh, I got to it from dynamic loading. Do this. And you can see when we click this button, a loading bar comes up. So we can actually wait for this and wait for it to go away, or we can wait for that to appear. So one thing we don't want to do is you don't want to put a pause here. Like I've seen people do pauses with this, like do a pause for 30 seconds. Well, that's it's not a good idea to do that ever because most of the time these are asynchronous calls to a server or something. And you don't know the exact time that something's going to come back. It could be 30 seconds. It could be 10 seconds. You don't know. So what WebJar does, it gives us these commands to make that very easy for us. So we can say, let's click this button and let's wait for that loading bar to go away or let's wait for this next text to exist here. So WebDriver has three, three methods to do this. We have wait for displayed. Wait for displayed will wait for an element to be visible. So the element might be, might be on a page, but it might not be displayed. So it might have like display none or visibility hidden or something like that. Here, we have wait for enabled, which is for like inputs. Sometimes you might have a checkbox that's, that's not enabled, it's disabled. So we need to wait until it becomes clickable until we can actually do something with it. So that's what that will do. And we have wait for exist. Wait for exist will wait for an element to exist on the page. You don't need this as much anymore with version five because actually version five in the background will do a wait for exist whenever you do a, a selector. So when you do this, when you select this, uh, this form here, if that element is not on the page, it will do a wait for exist in the background and wait for it to exist. So that's kind of nice in version five. We don't, have to, we don't have to do the wait for exist as much anymore. The one time we will, will, we will need to use it sometimes is if we want to wait for an element to not exist on the page. So you can actually do, do the reverse which I will show you shortly. So you can actually do the reverse of wait for displayed, wait for enabled as well. So the reverse of wait for displayed is wait for it to not be displayed and wait for it to not be enabled. So let's go and do this now. So let's go to this page. So the element is, is hidden on the page currently. So what we wanna do is we wanna click this. We can see the loading bar come up. We wanna wait until this text comes up. So first thing is let's let's get this button. Let's actually grab this URL here. All right. And I've got a new file here, wait for commands. Clear this out. Um, let's do do an it wait for display. All right, so let's open the page. All right, so we're gonna open the page and we wanna click this button. So we can just look for ID of start and then button selector. Start, and then the next element is button. Dot click. And so what happens when we do click, we want to wait for that text to be displayed. So if you actually look, let's, let's go here. So the text is hello world. So this text, text is actually on the page, but it's hidden. So if you look here, here is the hello world text. 
but it's hidden with display none. But if we click start, eventually, this could be a server call or, or something, the, the text is now on the page. So what we want to do is we want to do a test. We want to wait for this. We want to click the button and wait for hello world to exist. So let's do that. So we can click it. And how can we find this element? We can do, let's do finish H4. And I think that will work. Actually, let's, let's see what it looks like again. Okay, so finish. So we can look for the ID finish. So we can do ID finish. We can do wait for displayed. And this will now wait for the, for the element to be displayed before it actually does anything. So, so right here, this line, this line will not get executed right here until this has completed. So essentially this wait for displayed will stop execution and will not go to the next line until that element is displayed on the page. So we can even do, let's do an assertion. So we can do expect finish dot, actually the text is actually in H4, we can just do h4 dot get text dot two dot equal um, hello world. So let's see if this works. So if you'll see the the test will stop for a sec once it gets to here. Um, so let's run that. So now it's waiting, waiting, and boom. See, so briefly, you could see where the text came up. So you could see that it waited for this element to appear on the screen. And I'll sh let's run that one more time. So clicks, waiting for the text displayed perfect so we've got that all right so now let's let's go back let's look for this the element is rendered after the fact so that this this element is not actually on the page anymore so this one was hidden this is actually not on the page so we want to wait we need to wait for this element to exist so let's come here. We're going to create another it. Do wait for exist. And then let's do rather URL. Let's paste that. What's this button? Is it button start again? Let's just copy this down to here. All right, so when we do this now, it's gonna do a loading bar. No, no, all right, so now we have hello world. But this text did not, was not on the page already, so it got rendered. So what we need to do is we need, we need to wait for this element to actually exist. So really all we have to do in WebDriver version five is just finish. Um, we can just do that. Before in version five, we would have to do this. We have to do dot wait for, we have to do that. So we have to wait for it to exist and then get text. Where now we don't have to actually do that. But we can run this again. Let me comment this out. So go, so now it's waiting, 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 waiting for that element to exist. 
and boom, good. So this right here, when we call this, it does a wait for exist in the background. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. All right. Next, let's do let's do wait for not exist though this time. So when we click start, we have the loading bar that comes up. So let's inspect that real quick. And that has an ID of loading. So let's look for that to let's instead of this coming up to appear to be displayed. Let's wait for the loading bar to not be displayed. So what we can do here, let's comment this out. Let's actually just copy this. Comment that. So we can do that. So now we can do, we can actually keep that. This text. So we'll have the text. So once we click, we want to wait for we want to wait for the loading bar to go away. And that loading bar has an ID of loading. So we can do Well, it's actually going to exist on the page, but it's going to be hidden behind the scenes. So, if we did So we don't want to do wait for exist. We want to do wait for displayed, but we want to do the reverse. So let's do It's the same function as before, but to do the reverse of wait for displayed, we do undefined and true. And what that will do is that will wait for it to not be displayed on a page. So essentially, you can think of it wait for not exist almost. So let's run that. So it's waiting for it to not exist. Boom. So it didn't exist. So that worked. So the undefined here is actually um, how long does it want to wait before everything just times out? So undefined will default to what we have in the config file here. Um, so there's a wait for timeout. It's defaulted to 10 seconds. So this will be done globally for all your wait for commands. So when we did here, if it didn't appear within 10 seconds, this would error out. Um, but we overwrote it here. So let's just set it to one second to see if it will error out for us. So it should override the default config. All right, and you see how it says, loading still not displayed after 1,000 milliseconds. So we're going to find it. That's because we set the timeout to, to one second. So if we set it to undefined, it'll default to what's in the config file. And if we override it, it will override what's in the config file. All right, so wait for the wait for exist works the same way as wait for displayed. Is essentially, so if we wanted to wait for an element to not exist, we would just call wait for exist with undefined of true. All right. So now let's look at wait for enabled. And we can go here. So let's see, what do we got? Dynamic controls. Okay, beautiful. Wait for enabled. So what this does is helps with forms. So you can see that this form is disabled. This is an input, but I can't do anything to it. So let's do something about that. Let's do another it, wait for enabled. So let's open up the page. So let's, when you click this button, because what's gonna happen when we're gonna click this button, then after a few seconds, it's gonna be enabled. So boom, so now, now it's enabled. So what is this button? So we can do, we can find the button by input example button. Let's see. Sample button. 
we can do click. And now we want to do wait for enabled on this. So we can find it here. You see how it has disabled? So we can do input example input. Wait for enabled. So this will wait for enabled. Um, so that should work. Let's let's see what happens. That was quick. Something didn't seem right. Let's do a browser pause. Okay, there we go. So that worked there. So we could actually, just to do verify more, let, let's set a value in there. Um, do add value, just do foo. So then once it does, once it, it, the value is enabled or the, or the input is enabled, let's set the value. And again, you can see that this is redundant here. These should be stored in page objects, which I haven't gone over yet, but for now we could do like um, something like that. And then now we just um, can target it like this. So let's do that and let's put a pause. Wait for it to be enabled. Boom. Now it's enabled, so good. So that's basically how the wait for commands exit or work. You'll use these quite often. Um, wait for loading bars to go away and different things like that.